So the time has come to uh, sign your painting and you've worked very hard to create something uh, of interest. You've uh, ornamented your painting with uh, whatever you've learned and now the time has come to choose a spot somewhere near the bottom where you're going to sign your painting. Um, very often painters will leave some space in the canvas for a calligrapher to come along perhaps and write a beautiful haiku or a beautiful kana expression or something. And then in order to do that, leaving 60% of the canvas open for that, we also leave a space for the calligrapher's stamp or sign. That would mean that if this was the space in our painting that we're devoting to the calligrapher, we're not going to stamp or sign our painting down around here where it might visually conflict with where they might sign it. We'll choose another spot, perhaps over here, to sign our painting. In order to do that, you know, we're choosing um, a little stamp. Here I've got one that's small and it's uh, the first syllable of my given name. So typically uh, if your name was, for example, Takahashi or Suzuki uh, or Toyota was your family name, you wouldn't sign your character with the name Toyota or Suzuki. You would choose your first name which might be something like Kyoko, for example, uh, Kyoko Suzuki, and you would sign, your stamp would be the first character of your given name, which might be Kyo, K-Y-O. In my case, my name is Rebecca, and so I was given uh, this character, R-E-I, or Ray, for my name. Uh, two different types uh, with a considerably different luster and richness. Uh, this one here is often used in offices. It's just a little sponge with a bit of the pigment uh, worked in. It's got more of an orangey color and the quality of the, the ink or the pigment is just not as high. So um, unless you're you know, really in a rush or there's some reason why you don't, you wouldn't really choose this kind of grade of uh, pigment in order to stamp your painting. Most often these things come in porcelain. Uh, there is uh, a sheet of some kind of um, wax paper that's used to keep the ink moist. Uh, try not to get this on your clothes, it stains very, very badly. And what you're going to do is hold this down and you're just gently going to press this in. And from time to time, and you see I'm rolling it around, I'm exaggerating the motion a little bit, you're going to look and see, did I cover the entire surface of my stamp? The main thing is I'm just floating on the surface and gently tapping it. I'm not pressing it in because if I press in to this paste, it's going to get into the cracks of my stamp, which I don't want. Okay, so it's well inked at the moment. Um, close that up, move that off to the side, and now we're going to choose our location. We're not going to go over top of the painting itself. We're not going to go in the middle of the painting, nor are we going to go way down uh, at the very bottom of the paper because that doesn't leave room for the mounters. We want to come somewhere sort of unobtrusive out of the way. We wouldn't go way up here. Uh, probably somewhere around in this area is reasonable. Uh, again, you wouldn't want to go in line with the very bottom of whatever you've painted, but asymmetry is interesting. Now there's a kind of an interesting little gap there. I'm going to put it here. You only get one chance at doing this. If you twist, your stamp is going to be blurred. And if you've taken a long time to make a nice painting, that's the last thing you want. So holding down the paper, and this is another reason why we have this soft, um, spongy material to press into, so the paper will press into that and we'll be sure to get good contact uh, with the stamp, the ink, and the paper. Um, you're going to press down. Ready? Press. Put your thumb on top and wiggle it gently around. You can see I'm just wiggling gently in a circle, but I'm not twisting the stamp. I'm just gently pushing on it. When you're ready to take it off, hold the paper down and come off very sharply or suddenly so you're not going to peel it off and risk um, the rotation of it. The stamp is now covered in ink and in order to make a really good impression the next time we do a painting you want to clean it off immediately. So take a, a piece of tissue and just grind it into that tissue and continue to do that until the tissue or whatever it is that you're using, it could be a rag, comes more or less 
completely clean. Make sure that you get the edges as well of all of the, the stamp, okay? Uh, and this is very, very important to do because over time this paste is going to accumulate a little bit of residue, as you can see inside this one, on the inside, and it's going to decrease the, the visibility of the character. So uh, definitely do do as good a job as you can to clean it up. Okay, so that's reasonably cleaned right now. The next thing you have to do before you transport this painting anywhere is this is going to leave, and here I'll, I'll give you an example, it's going to leave a little bit of, of redness here. If you roll this up, that stamp is going to leave an impression on other parts of the painting or whatever it is that you're, um, that you're rolling it in. So before you transport the painting, always a very good idea to put, and because this is such thin paper, put something folded, usually some kind of uh, tissue paper, underneath and on top. Press it down. Okay, that's not going to blur it by doing this. In order to get up as much of the residue, and I don't know if you can see, there's just a faint little trace here of the red. Um, so I'm just going to turn that inside out now and put that back in there. And then now the painting can be moved or transported. And it may take uh, quite a bit of time before that dries, effectively maybe you know a day or two or three. So uh, do be sure to do that. Now, in terms of care of this cinnabar or this, this stamp or this resin, from time to time, extremely infrequently, best to do this on a very, very hot day that's very humid in the middle of summer, sometimes these come with a little ivory tab or some little piece of stick. Um, and basically, you're going to move that around and, and re-blend the the uh, paste or the substance, but until that day comes, and it may not come for like three or five years, uh, do make sure that you keep this. Sometimes they come with um, with saran wrap or some kind of plastic wrap, but do press it on, obviously <laughs> protecting to make sure it's the right side so you don't get red ink all over your hands, uh, and keep that sealed and keep that in the box that it comes in, and preferably put a little elastic band around it so it doesn't fall or come open inside the box.